Entitled my sharing this evening from crisis to celebration. From crisis to celebration. You heard me? From crisis to celebration. They say you are either heading towards a crisis or you are in a crisis or you are coming out of somewhat, some crisis. I don't know which crisis you are going through now. Some seated here could be struggling uh, with registration. I saw long lines, long queues. Some still don't know whether they will register or not. That could be your crisis. Some seated here could be struggling with probably health. They're not well. That could be your crisis. Others here, and many of you are young, are struggling to be recognized. Am I speaking to someone? That could be your crisis. But I want to speak to us from the scriptures this evening that through this facility of prayer, God intends 
to turn around what you may look at as crisis and make it a celebration. Amen. That is what God thrives at. That's what he intends with our lives, to have lives of joy. I read through the scriptures, and that is what I see. From the very moment the tragedy of sin befell this world, God walked that evening into the Garden of Eden, and he intended to turn that tragedy into celebration. And the story that is found in the scriptures is God working out so that his people could be joyous. Doesn't the scriptures end in a note of celebration? When John says, and I saw new Jerusalem and new earth. God wants to walk us through life as we go through to that moment when we will celebrate with him in heaven. I've chosen a book. I've chosen a passage that I would like us to meditate upon as we get into our Sabbath mood. I've chosen the book of Esther. Esther is one of the interesting books in the scripture. It's one of those books where, as some of you know, the name God is not mentioned. You don't find that in the book of Esther. But you cannot read the, the book of Esther without seeing the fingerprint of God all over it. In the coincidences that are there in the book of Esther, in the reverses that God makes in the book of Esther, you can only think of one thing, that there are are so many instances in the book of Esther that are providential. God is the one who is behind the scenes working things out for the Jews who are still in exile through the ministry of this young lady, Esther. And so we read in the text that was read to us in the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Verse 16 says, Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa, and fast for me, do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, let me perish. A beautiful passage indeed in the book of Esther. We all know the story of this young lady. We know how providentially there was a beauty pageant and Esther became a queen. We all know how the enemy of the Jews, Haman, had a plan to exterminate the Jews. And so the Jewish community in Persia and in the nation and the entire empire of Persia were in what we can call a crisis. And it was not a small crisis. There was an edict a law, a decree 
that was passed, as the narrative says, that on a certain day, all the Jews in Persia were to be exterminated. And so in that crisis, Mordecai, Esther's uncle, sends a word to the young queen in the palace of what was going to happen to the Jews. And so the text that we read is a response of Esther during that time of crisis. And what did Esther do? It is mentioned in the passage that we have read that Esther replied and said, go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. I would like you to read that passage as saying, go and tell all the Jews in Susa to pray for me. In the moment of crisis, Esther turned to God in prayer. I don't know what you do when you reach a moment of crisis, but this story teaches me and should teach us all how to handle our moments of crisis. Didn't I say as I was beginning that prayer is a privilege that God has given to each and every one of us? In a moment of crisis, the best place to go is to go to God. I will repeat, in the moment of crisis, the best place to be is before God. The scripture is full of narratives of people who in their crisis cried out to God in the promises of God. He says, turn unto me in the hour of need and I will hear you. Is there anybody in this church this evening with a need? I am prescribing this to you. As the word of God says, the best place to turn to when you are in need is God. Sometimes we are tempted to look at other things when we are in crisis. I would like to ask you, don't do that. Man will fail you. Wisdom of man may not avail in the crisis that you may be having. Because sometimes it may be something as extreme as was in the case of Esther, a death decree had gone out and they were waiting for the day of extermination. It could be there are moments when some statements come to us as extreme as was Esther's. A doctor has said your disease cannot be treated or you've worked so hard at something and it is not working. The encouraging message that I would like to present to you this evening is that just as Esther, in the moment of crisis, turned to God, we need to turn to God and pray. And that's why our church in its program designed that as we begin the year, we begin with the knowledge that prayer is critical for our lives. I need not elaborate what happened 
after these sessions of prayer and fasting in Susa and all over the empire, what happened was what could not have been done. As those of you who are Bible students know, that the laws of the Medes and the Persians were to be kept. Esther dared God and asked that, please present me to God. And God, who is a master of impossibilities, will be able to do that which is impossible because the laws of the Medes and the Persians were impossible to change. He even say, she even said in this text that if I perish, let me perish, because for the Medes and the Persians, if somebody broke their law, the penalty was death. What am I saying, church? To that which appears to be impossible, that which cannot be done, God has said in his word that he does not have in his vocabulary something known as impossible because he says everything with God is what, church, is possible. I am presenting to you a God of possibility. Please go to him while time lasts. And so Esther, because of this prayer, God worked miracles and when she approached the king, the king was eager to pay attention to her. And the king accepted her invitation. And when during the banquet Esther presented her requests to the king, the king answered positively. That's how God wants to work with us when we come to him in prayer. And so, church, I would request and plead, just as Esther did at that moment of crisis, let us always turn to God, and God will turn tables for us. Now, there are three little words that I would like us to look at, and then I will invite us to have a word of prayer as we wind our service this evening. Now, this passage that was read to us, Esther says, Go gather together. Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Yes, you will read so many gatherings in the book of Esther. There were gatherings at the beginning by King Hasueros. Uh, we read of the beauty pageant that was there. He even had several others. We will read of the gatherings also at the end of the book, but the gathering that Esther is asking the Jews to do in this passage is coming together in prayer. Go gather together. What a call for us this evening that as we begin our year, as we begin our semester, Never forget the gatherings where people go to worship. Miracles will happen when we do that. Go gather together. Don't forget the moments when you are to appear before God. We will have so many sessions of prayer this semester. How I pray that you come to each and every one of them. And as you come to each and every one of them, do not forget your private, personal prayer. Success that we read after the fourth chapter of Esther happened because of the call that God moved Esther to do. Go gather together. 
It was a gathering to come together to fast and pray. That should be our attitude in life. And let me just be quick to say, prayer is not simply coming here every evening and morning. That is part of it. Prayer is an attitude that you carry throughout the day, throughout the night. Prayer is opening your heart always to God. How beautiful will it be if we live in the atmosphere of God? Didn't you hear the scriptures say that Enoch walked with God? What he did was, he was always communicating with God. And when he entered heaven, it was still the same thing because that's what he was used to. Go, gather together. What a beautiful call to us this evening that as we go on with life, let us not forget the key thing, which is speaking to God. Sister White defines a prayer in the book Steps to Christ this way. Prayer is opening your heart to God as you would open to a friend. I will repeat because some didn't hear. Prayer is opening your heart to God as you would to what? To a friend. I see lovers dotting our campus. They walk around and they talk so much. They text so much. And even now I've, we will release you from this hall of worship. Lovers will want to be close to one another. Talking with God is talking to someone who loves you. We don't talk to God because we want to squeeze some few things out of him. No. When we talk to God, is a response to the one who loved us so much and gave his life to us. And when you do that, you will be blessed. How I pray that we live in the atmosphere, in the presence of God. Go, gather together. And after Esther had said that, she added something else. Go, gather together, then I will go. Then I will go. I see that statement of this young lady expressing confidence in God. When we approach God in prayer, there is this thing called faith in God, believing that he is able to fulfill what he has said. Esther says, I will go. Because you've gathered together and called the name of God to protect me as I stand before King Asuerus, I will go. The promises of God in the scriptures are for us to claim. And those promises are sure when we claim them. Esther said, I will go because of the conviction he had about God. Yes, let us look at the scriptures, how God has dealt with his people. How God has fulfilled his promises to his people. And some of you seated here can look back into their lives and say, this was God, this was God, this was God. Look at those moments when God led you. And they will give you confidence to face the future. And therefore I see people who are always on their knees People who are prayerful will always face life with confidence. Do you know what is there in the future? My answer is no. The only person who knows what the future holds is God. Why don't you throw your hands into the hand of the one who already is in the future? And that is God. For you to have that confidence, you need to live in his 
presence. Faith is the assurance of things not done what? Not seen. You see them and yet you don't have them because God has said so. That is what Esther is expressing when he says, when she says, go and pray, then I will do what? I will go. Uh, before I sit down, I want to tell you that sometimes we read the book of Esther and we marvel at these heroes of faith. But go read comments about Esther from Ellen G. White. Esther and Mordecai, her uncle, were the remnants who remained in Persia. God had given an instruction that all Jews should leave Persia. But a few did not heed that instruction, and they remained in Persia. And that was Mordecai, her niece, and the rest of the Jews who remained in Persia. In essence, these were people who were not so much upright. Let me disappoint you. Nevertheless, nevertheless, when they were in danger, these not so good people, our God who is so gracious and so loving, listened to their cry. I want to say that in the book of Esther, what we see as we read it, God being patient with these Gentiles who didn't go back home, is our God who is a gracious God. Why don't we take time when God still offers us an opportunity to come to him, repent, live upright lives, and ask him to fulfill his promises in our lives. Because he is a gracious God. He was gracious to Esther and to who? To Mordecai and the rest of the Jews. He will be gracious to you and I. Okay? Now, church, Esther was a beautiful young lady. I know there are so many beautiful young ladies here. But in addition to her beauty, she was prayerful. I call you young, young ladies to do that. Okay? I know there are some young men here who feel that they are very handsome. Okay? You cannot beat Daniel. A search was sent out to look for young men who are having good looks. Daniel was one of them. But in addition to that physical appearance, he was a man of what? Of prayer. Some of you here, young men, may think you are smart. I will remind you of Daniel. He would have scored straight four GPAs throughout four years of stay here. But he was still prayerful. Who are you? Should I emphasize more about prayer? No. I think that's enough. Let us be men and women of prayer. Amen. Let us be men and women of what? Amen. Did you know that up to now, in Israel, they celebrate a festival known as Purim? Purim is to commemorate the deliverance of the Israelites during the time of Esther. I don't know whether you are listening to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this. For you to be powerful and bring change in this nation, in this community, in wherever you are coming from, greatness will be yours if you are a man or a woman of prayer.
that simple, of, simple act of Aunt Esther in calling for prayer and being prayerful has rippled for ages and ages and centuries and centuries. It is still commemorated in the history of the Jews. And also, I am preaching about that this evening. Please, let us be men and women of prayer. Shall we pray? Our loving Heavenly Father, we have read your word this evening reminding us of the privilege of prayer. Father, in prayer you give us an opportunity to present to you our needs, to present to you our joys. And we pray this evening that while this privilege lasts, may we make use of it. Seated in this congregation this evening are people who are in crisis. And you are a God who would like to change those moments of crisis in our lives into moments of celebration. How we bring those various needs that they may have to your throne of grace. Do a miracle as you did for Esther long time ago. There are those with financial challenges. There are those with academic challenges. There are those with social challenges. And even there are those who need some decision in their lives. How we commit all of them into your hand so that you may meet all of us at our various points of need. As we go out of this place of worship, may you bless us with your Sabbath blessings. Keep us safe and bring us again tomorrow so that we may hear more of these things. We ask these things in Jesus' name.